we've witnessed Her Majesty's final goodbye. The biggest gathering of world leaders since the funeral of George VI has most people thinking it's also the biggest gathering of world egos in the same 70-year period. Imagine being in charge of that seating arrangement. And that's just the people within the family. And they've put away old hostilities. Wouldn't it be nice if some others could do the same? Well, some of us just aren't that classy, I'm afraid. The chap doing some of that punching is Mongol bikey Eugene McClutchy. Eugene which is not a really bikey sounding name to be completely frank. <laughs> What's your name? I want you. It's Eugene. Was one of 10 Mongols who were at the Whistling Kite pub in Secret Harbour a few Fridays ago when they ran into some members of a rival gang. The rules are there ain't no rules. The gang being New Zealand's notorious mongrel mob. Someone made a crack about something. Have you ever been told you're mediocre and bad? Have you ever been told you got a weird shaped head? And it was on. McClutchy kind of got pulled into it all. He wasn't an instigator, and I actually don't think he was interested in getting into a pub fight at all. But when you have the word menace tattooed on your chin, you're probably used to some disproportionate attention from the constabulary. I got bad feelings. When the cops later searched him, they found three Dexies in his pocket, to which he offered a defence straight out of year four. My friend gave them to me. He was also charged with displaying gang insignia. That was a little bit harder to blame on someone else because Eugene has undergone the latest must-have cosmetic procedure, tattooed eyebrows. Only, instead of using subtle natural colours to add depth and volume, he had the word Mongols inked on his left brow and the acronym AVAFP or something like that on his right. AVAFP? No idea. Maybe someone can explain it on the Facebook page. He got a $3,000 fine for the fight, which works out to be quite a lot per punch. Interestingly, his lawyer Nick Scarry told the court that while there were only three mongrel mobsters in the pub at the time, there were 20 others waiting outside. Catch me outside, how about that? If that's true, then the gang from across the ditch has quite a serious presence in WA. You know, it's been a while. The last time these guys were in the news was 35 years ago, when Eddie Withnell looked like this. The mob arrived in town in the 1980s expecting to be welcomed like split ends. Sometimes I get frightened. Only to discover they were as popular as Richard Hadley. And they soon learned that just like Australian sportsmen, Australian bikies would throw away the rule book in order to get rid of them. An underarm. You haven't believed it? WA's existing four outlaw motorcycle clubs thought the mob were bringing down the tone of the place. Totally ruining the vibe. Eddie said they were... Soldiers of terror and merchants of crime. Eddie being a convicted rapist who robbed a bank while on work release. Withnell's coffin cheaters joined forces with God's Garbage, the Gypsy Jokers and Club Deros to defeat the evil invader. Sounds like Lord of the Rings. And you have my bow. And my axe. The four clubs acted as one super gang, like an underworld Voltron. <laughs> It worked, and after a few days of violence, the mongrel mob decided it was too much hassle and they went back to New Zealand. After a highly choreographed press conference orchestrated by the largest gang in town, Waipol. Shows what can happen with a strong coalition. Yeah, something that's not lost on the Liberals and Nationals. Unlike in federal politics, the local Nats and Libs aren't part of a formal coalition. It's a loose alliance. No joint party room meetings, little policy collaboration, no tactical election campaigning. Who are we all set? Isn't... Our interview tomorrow? They've realised that when you're a scrappy insurgency fighting an enemy as powerful as Mark McGowan, you need to act strategically. They usually do. Yeah, the Libs and Nats have traditionally always been close. After all, the landed gentry of the country has a lot in common with the hoi polloi in the western suburbs. <laughs> OK, good. Brendan Grills blew that up in the wake of the 2008 election when he flirted with forming government with Alan Carpenter. He never did, of course, opting instead to usher in the age of the emperor. But there's been mutual distrust between the main conservative parties ever since. They'll need to iron out some policy differences. Of which there are quite a few. The Libs will go to the 2025 election promising further deregulation of shopping hours and that's something the Nats who can shop any time they want because trading hours in the country were deregulated years ago. Two beers for two weary travellers. We won't be open for another hour. By then we'll be serving breakfast. Completely oppose. But there's a bigger problem. Who's going to be opposition leader in a formal coalition? Good question. For the past few generations that's been a Liberal because they've held more seats. But that's not the case with Mia Davies and... What's his name? 
whatever they do, they need to work it out fast because right now their electoral chances are disappearing as fast as a Mercedes down a sinkhole in Subiaco. I don't know if windscreen wipers are going to save you in that situation. What's his name reckons the result in the weekend Northwest Central by election shows the Liberals have turned the corner. Yeah, but didn't the Liberals lose the by election? Yes, but not by as much as they could have. <laughs> That's progress. Could be the start of a new era. Although we know the good ones take 70 years to make. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.